How long does it take to dismember a body? I think of it as a platform for art and social change. I can't sit here and drink by myself, though. Then I look like the asshole. The Taliban have claimed responsibility for an attack in Kandahar that killed the city's top-ranking police chief and its intelligence chief, but missed another target, American General Scott Miller. General Abdul Razik, who the U.S. considered to be crucial for keeping peace in Helmand province, died in a shooting inside the governor's compound following a meeting with American officials to discuss securing the elections on Saturday. Former USA Gymnastics President Steve Penny was arrested Wednesday, the first alleged Larry Nasser enabler to face charges. Penny was indicted for ordering the removal of potentially incriminating documents. His lawyer says that when all the facts are known, the allegations against Penny will be disproven. Penny resigned under pressure in March of last year, and his replacement quit after just nine months. Then her replacement resigned on Tuesday after holding the job for just four days. This is the size of the average man. And this is the size of what Kleenex calls the man-sized tissue. Despite the discrepancy, Kimberly Clark had sold the tissue line in the UK for 60 years. Now it's bowing to public pressure, renaming the product Kleenex Extra Large. Though in a statement, the company also defended itself, saying that it, quote, in no way suggests that being both soft and strong is an exclusively masculine trait. Jamal Khashoggi, the dissident writer who walked into Saudi Arabia's consulate in Istanbul and never walked out, has been missing for 16 days. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo flew to Riyadh to make a show of getting the facts, but he didn't come back with many answers. There, there are lots of stories out there about what has happened. We just are going to allow the process to move forward, uh, allow the facts to unfold. Those facts were apparently enough for Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin who tweeted that he's calling off a trip to Saudi Arabia that was set for next week. Speaking this afternoon, President Trump would only confirm the obvious. Uh, Jamal Khashoggi is dead. Uh, it certainly looks that way to me. It's very sad. While the administration continues to sit on whatever it is they know, a lot of what the rest of the world knows came out of this newsroom. Sabah is one of Turkey's most widely read daily newspapers. Tell us what, what you guys have, have been facing every day. It's such a huge story. This is the story of intelligence. This is the story of diplomacy as well. And this is a crime story. The office may not look like much, but it's been the source of some of the biggest scoops about the case. They were the first to report that private jets linked to Saudi Arabia landed in Istanbul shortly before Jamal Khashoggi's disappearance and left soon after. And the first to label the 15 men that have been accused of involvement as an assassination squad that checked into two hotels just a mile from the consulate, entering the building prior to Khashoggi, before two black vehicles with diplomatic plates left an hour and 54 minutes later. Today, Abdurrahman Shimshek and his team published an exclusive that they believe sheds light on who was in charge of the team. For Shimshek and his colleagues, the new images showing this man, Maha Abdelaziz Mutreb, leading the team into the consulate, tie back to Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. So yes. you, you, yes. you guys broke the story. <laughs> yes, yes. His name is Maher Abdulaziz Mutraf, yes. Ah, Utraf. This guy. That's the guy who brought with uh, King Salman. The prince, MBS. The prince. That's, that's Sorry, his bodyguard. Not, not the king, prince, yeah. yes, yes, prince Salman. Which one says yes. yes. You think the overwhelming likelihood is that yes, he was killed? He was killed, yes. And then his body taken outside, you think? That's right. But the smoking gun may be an audio tape that Sabah's reporters might or might not have listened to. He has spoken to somebody who has heard it, right? Or, or, or he's getting some second-hand knowledge of it. <laughs> you can't tell us. You can't reveal your sources. Yeah, the ses kaydında önce 
Başkonsolosun odasında e, önce bir çay kahve e, daha sonra e, birileri geliyor ses kaydına başka bir odaya alınıyor. E, orada e, sesler yükselmeye bağırıyor, sorgulanmaya başlanıyor. Üçüncü odada ise e, dövülmeye başlıyor, iskence görüyor ve sesler tamamen finish. How, how sure are you that this recording exists? Is... Yani, <gülüyor> yani din, bir defa bunun bizim güvendiğimiz kaynaklar e, tarafınca e, tespit edildiğini, dinlendiğini biliyoruz. Hani biz e, o manada konuşmayı dinleyen insanlardan duyduğumuz bilgi bu yönde. The Turkish government has a record of imprisoning journalists. But in this case it has actively investigated the disappearance of one inside the consulate of a country it's at odds with. A lot of the information Sabah has uncovered is from government sources. The paper is owned by Omer Faruk Kalyoncu, a businessman close to Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Do you ever feel like you're being used? Yok, hayır, hiç kullanıldığımızı düşünmüyoruz. A a aslında bizim bu tarz araştırmalarımız e yani biraz belki erken araştırmalar ama gazeteciler biliyorsunuz bir şeyleri böyle araştırarak şey yapar, öğrenirler. Türkiye'nin diplomatik konudaki stratejisi ayrı, istihbarat stratejisi ayrı, adli kriminal boyut ayrı. Biz istihbarat boyutu ile ilgili araştırmalar yapıp yayınlıyoruz. Sabah has gotten its information piece by piece. Until this week, Saudi Arabia didn't agree to let Turkish investigators inside the consulate. We spoke to a forensics expert about what they might have found two weeks later. Eğer kişi öldürüldükten sonra bu eylem meydana getirilmişse çok fazla etraf çok kanlı olmayacaktır. Hele ki e, gerekli güvenlik önlemleri alınmışsa, yani etrafta herhangi bir kan olmayacaktır. Ama e, canlıyken meydana getirilmişse tabii e, durum biraz daha değişik olacak. How long does it take to dismember a body? E, dakikalar içerisinde kaba, kaba bir şekilde bu eylem e, gerçekleştirilebilir. Hele ki yeterince tıbbi cihaz söz konusuydu da planlanmış bir eylem olsa gerek. Do you think they could get through airport security with body parts? Ya bugün o koşullarda mümkün değil. Özel bir alandan geçilmediği sürece. Çünkü o hava alanı güvenliğinde e, hem e, fiziksel hem de gerektiğinde biyolojik deliller de değerlendirilebiliyor. Ben sık sık durduruluyorum. E, en ufak bir e, parça yüzünden. Turkish police are trying to get an idea of how long the Saudis had to plan. They spoke to one of Khashoggi's friends, Turan Kışlakçı. Friday he went to consulate. They accept him very well and giving him tea. Okay, uh, but they said no. Today we, uh, there is a no consulate. So he'd already been to the consulate yeah, before, before. before. Yeah, before Friday he was there. And they treated him yeah, well. They, yeah, yes, very well. And, and, and then he there left, was, and they said yeah, you have yeah, to come back. Yeah, after four days we have to come again. So you, it was a trap. I mean, they yes. laid a trap for really it. Really, it was. How I, we can understand this? There is a one. First of all, that day they give, uh, they allowed all the Turkish who are working in the consulate. Today is holiday. The second one is those people who want to go to Umrah in Saudi Arabia for Umrah, you know, uh, pilgrim. Mm -hmm. so they told them, today we can give, uh, give any visa. Please come after tomorrow. Through Sabah's reporting, we're getting a picture of what Turkey believes happened on October 2nd. But Saudi Arabia still hasn't presented their side. To journalists at Sabah, it's pretty clear what happened. Bence daha üst bir düzeyde e, tabii ki araştırma sonucunda çık evet. çıkacak. Ama şunu söyleyebilirim, e, iki tane e, jetle İstanbul'a geliyor, 15 kişilik bir istihbarat heyeti geliyor. Bunların Suudi Devleti ile Kral Selman ailesinin haberi olmadan gelmesi, gelmesi zor, çok, e, çok zor. Ha. Biz öyle değerlendiriyoruz ama resmi makamların açıklamaları tabii ki daha öyle e, geçerliliği koruyor. The detective approaches the dumpster slowly. He notices a strong odor and an overabundance of flies circling above the hinged lid. An experienced investigator, 
he already knows what he's about to find. That's the voice of Jennifer Manzella, the host and producer of Countdown to Capture, a true crime podcast about the case of Peter Chadwick. In 2012, police in the affluent city of Newport Beach, California, found bloodstains and broken glass in the home that Chadwick shared with his wife and their two sons. Days later, a hundred miles away, they found her body in a dumpster. Chadwick initially told investigators that his wife had been killed by a Latino handyman who kidnapped him and tried to force him to drive his wife's body to the Mexican border. But police didn't buy it. And an affidavit obtained by the Orange County Register says he later admitted to making up the story. Chadwick was charged with murder. He pleaded not guilty, posted bail, and then disappeared. Police have been looking for him ever since. I'll tell you about the life he led, the lies he told, and how he abandoned his children. I'll tell you why he's most wanted. Countdown to Capture follows the style of other popular true crime podcasts, like Dirty John and Serial. It got over 160,000 listens within a few days of the release of its first episode, and hit number 24 on the overall iTunes charts in the United States. Not quite serial numbers, but pretty good, considering that Countdown to Capture is not produced by an experienced media company. It's made by a police department, the same department that's investigating the case. Manzella works for Newport Beach PD. What was the conversation when you kind of pitched the idea of saying, hey, maybe we could do a podcast about this? Um, I did hear, I don't know what a podcast is, but that sounds exciting. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Um, and I think that it very quickly went from, I'm not sure if that's a good idea to, this is, this is a great thing, run with it and go. The case itself is very episodic in nature. So the podcast format seemed to work really well just for me when I was thinking about how I was going to lay it out. In episodes one through five, I told you the story of murderer and fugitive Peter Chadwick. As a journalist, yes. if I'm talking about Peter Chadwick, I have to say Peter Chadwick, who allegedly right. committed right. a murder. And we don't use the word alleged. Right. right. You just, right. you call him a murderer. A murderer and fugitive. Absolutely. So we put out those same kinds of statements all the time. We're just getting those statements to more people because this podcast has become so viral. In a way, she's right. This is what shows like America's Most Wanted used to do, telling the police side of the case and getting the public interested in catching the suspects. Tonight on America's Most Wanted. But police making their own narrative drama about an open case without a middleman is pretty new. And Priscilla Ocean, who teaches criminal law at Loyola Law School, is concerned about the implications. You listened to the podcast. I did. I listened to about four episodes, yeah. And it's entertaining. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely engaging. That's why it's so terrifying. You know, I think because it's so uh, entertaining, it is more effective then in terms of set, selling a one-sided narrative about the police's certainty that this person who has not been tried, who has not pled guilty, um, is guilty of this crime. Isn't it fairly natural that police would want to make sure that the narrative that is being told about a crime is their narrative? Well, it's not necessarily the case that that's what they should be doing. Mm. Right. Police are there to investigate crimes. It is not their job to come to a legal conclusion about that. Police don't get to be executioners. They don't get to be the judge and the jury. But recently, police have been criticized for trying to sway public opinion before a case can even get to a judge and jury. In the case of Michael Brown, Ferguson PD released video that they said shows him stealing cigarillos, but withheld other footage that might have given a fuller picture. And after Botham Jean was shot in his own home by an off-duty police officer, Dallas police said they found marijuana in his apartment. Ocean is worried about what might happen if podcasts are added to the police's arsenal. When you are dealing with police shootings, the police are not so forthcoming. They are not going to do a podcast, right, indicting their officer. So it's also about selective use of the podcast. So which cases are they going to use the podcast for? Do you think this is a kind of Pandora's box? This is going to happen again? I, I don't know. I mean, look, if they if they get a tip off of this um, that leads to the arrest, the uh, rearrest of uh, Peter Chadwick, maybe other law enforcement agencies consider doing it. Have you heard from other police departments? 
We have. We've actually had a couple um, departments reach out to us and ask for uh, equipment recommendations because they're interested in starting their own podcast series about their um, cold cases. And we've heard from a couple departments who are just reaching out to say that they were intrigued and that they were listening as well. When you do get comments where people are saying, look, innocent until proven guilty, you're trying to manipulate how people feel about this case that's still open. How do you feel when you hear that? We're not trying to convince anybody of Peter Chadwick's guilt. Absolutely not. We are trying to conduct a manhunt. We're trying to get his face out there and we're trying to raise awareness about this case. I'm not sure that everybody walks away convinced of, of our position, but we're absolutely confident that our case will stand up. It's probably why he's not here. The Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C. began in 2012 as just a luxury hotel project. D.C.'s full of them. And Trump's remaking of the taxpayer-owned old post office building wasn't seen as a political act back then. But by the time renovations were complete and the hotel opened, Trump was a presidential candidate on the way to an upset victory. In the years since, the hotel has become the conservative hangout in Washington. It's the home to Republican Party fundraisers, parties for foreign dictators, this guy's book party. The left didn't have a place like that until now. Hi, Hi. welcome to the Eaton DC. Thank How you. may I guide you on your journey? <laughs> well, let me check in first. May I provide you with some healing energy? Yeah, this, what am I supposed to do with this? Take whichever one resonates the most with you. Cool, then I just like, put it in my pocket or something? Whatever you like. Great. This is the Eaton Hotel. It's supposed to be the new progressive oasis in Washington. You get a free crystal when you check in, and the TVs don't have Fox News. This place is pushing the boundaries of hashtag resistance capitalism. They're all the vaguely spiritual things that make rich liberals the butt of jokes. They're also all the fancy things, like $250 a night for a room, that allow them to consume conspicuously. But here, each dollar is a political statement. I actually don't think of Eden as a hotel. I think of it as a hotel-shaped Trojan horse that is actually a platform for art and social change. Catherine Lowe is the founder. Her family's in the real estate and luxury hotel business in Hong Kong. And that company owns the Eden. But it's her project. Welcome, everyone. This is one of the first times the Eden Wellness Center has been used. So thank you guys for blessing it with your energy. Grand opening weekend was themed the Human Progress Festival. It showed off what's supposed to make Eaton different. There's the Wellness Center. Discussion groups on politics. What do you recommend to combat this idea of undermining journalism and press freedom? Art talks. It's titled Queer Places and Spaces. Vegan Big Macs. We're allowed to go a little bit more adventurous. There was an astrologist on hand then apparently it's a terrible time to be a Capricorn. Buckle up, buttercup, just, you know. Hold on tight. An artist was hired to project happy feelings. Cat flew an activist from all over the country to take part. I did herbal tonic shots with Doreen Burr, a native environmental rights activist from New Mexico. Bottoms up. Summer's timer. There we go. There are plenty of other stronger tonics available at the hotel's two stylish bars. I really, really enjoy the idea that the money I'm spending is going towards a cause that I believe in. The plan at Eaton is to take that money and convert it into social good. There's even a guy on staff whose whole job is to do just that. He's called the impact strategist. I make sure that Eaton lives up to its progressive values in an authentic and tangible way, that we're actually engaged in social movement and progressive causes in DC. Here's the thing. When the most vocal progressives make a statement these days, it doesn't look like this. It looks like this. In politics right now, the conversation for a lot of people is on the left, they think that like capitalism as an idea is a bad idea, right? But this is a profit-making business. So how do you square those two things? In a way, you're using the capitalist model, but then putting, channeling some of that revenue into supporting these cultural and activist programs. 
but you are hoping to make a lot of money. For me personally, that's not the point of creating this. For me, it has to be self-sustaining, but definitely for the parent company, I'm sure that they hope that it'll be more than sustainable. So what's different about working here than maybe another hotel? Um, a lot of the new staff say that they've never worked for a company that had such a sense of greater purpose and they were really moved by it. So I think that's probably the biggest difference. Are you paying them more? We pay a fair rate here. Okay, but it's like a competitive rate or more than you think other places pay? I'll have to look into that, but definitely standard for the industry. We looked into it. The hotel operates under the city's main hotel workers union contract. That means Eaton Maids and other staff start at $22.35 an hour with zero premium health care, vacation time, and a pension. A lot of DC hotels operate under that contract. The Trump International does, in fact. So Eaton isn't innovating when it comes to hotel worker pay. But the union says the hotel is, quote, true to the ideals they've been espousing in their brand. Robin Bell was the guy Kat hired to project that nice image onto the outside of her hotel. His usual haunt is the Trump International, where he uses projectors in a not so nice way. We've done, there's a rapist in the White House, uh, paid Trump bribes here. Uh, we did a shithole projection where we had the emojis. So an agitprop artist used to painting one luxury hotel as the embodiment of everything he hates, projects an ad onto another luxury hotel. One that's trying to make a buck by being everything he likes. 21 year old Robin Bell wouldn't have gotten this. I'm a little bit older now and I go, okay, you know, I've seen the ups and downs of trying to like live your values. And in general, I've been like pleasantly surprised. So what would you say to 21 year old Robin Bell then? We need allies and we need to really think that revolutions and, and things come from all types of people. You know, rich, poor, left, right. We need people. Macy Gray, what's up, everybody? How you doing? These are my vices. I love Fireball. It's like a drink for like amateurs, people who have no money and drink cheap shit. Great buzz. It has cinnamon in it, which is healthy. It's straight to the point. It's not trying to bullshit you. It's like I'm here to like get you faded. Like let's go. I can't sit here and drink by myself though. Then I look like the asshole. <laughs> Okay, who's gonna do it with me? Cheers. Okay. Mm. Ah. Oh, I love goldfish. Some things inspire snacks, and when those things happen, I crave goldfish. It's a snack, it doesn't smell. Like, you can smell lace, you can smell barbecue, but you can't smell goldfish. I've been thinking about goldfish ever since I got here. I want goldfish. But I want to maintain my gangster and not have yellow teeth on camera. So Blackjack is the first gambling game I learned how to play. The first time I played it, oh shit, oh big. First time I played it, I won, so I kind of got attached to it because I thought, oh, you just go play Blackjack and you win money. I'm doing doubling down. Ace, baby, ace. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's messed up. Oh, yeah, gambling is always an issue. If you gamble money, that's it's already too much because <laughs> the odds are stacked against you. Most have a one was 28,000. Oh, no, I know exactly how much, how much I've lost, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> that's a lot. See, but I'm wanting to see why I can't. See this? I know what I'm doing. See how quick I did that? I've actually had two DUIs, two drunk driving citations. And that's something, now that I'm a little older, I'm strongly against, because it's just so unnecessary. You just have so many options to get home and to take that risk for other people's lives and your lives and going to jail. It's just the most unnecessary, stupidest thing you could do. I think when you're a young artist, you you know your out is always that. You're you're a young artist. You're new at, at the whole fame and being a artist professionally. 
When you're in the papers all the time, you see people kind of enjoying the entertainment of it. I think as you get older, you just you just start looking like an idiot. There's a real craft to fame, but if you don't know how to how to handle it, then you'll be famous for the wrong reasons, which you don't want, you know. So my kids are total, you know, 20 year olds. They just see the world a whole different way. We feel, you know, Trump and we're so offended by him and so pissed off and they're just like, whatever, dude. Like everything is about Instagram and the new Travis Scott record and the rest of it is, is bullshit to them. I'm, I'm telling you, they are not, they don't trip like we do.